whenever the official start of your year is, whether that's the 1st of January, whether that's the beginning of September for the new academic year, you need to start your yearly planning process by doing one thing. And that thing is reflecting on the previous year. It's tempting to just dive right in and assume that you're this fresh new person who's going to feel super motivated come the first day of the year. And there can be a tendency to think that all of the stuff that went a bit wrong last year is just going to magically melt away. Yeah, that's not going to happen. We've got to look at the last year in detail, and that involves looking at the yucky bits as well as the nice sparkly glittery bits. Because otherwise, the stuff that held us back, the things that went wrong, the things that didn't work out, they are going to come and bite us on the bottom again. And the valuable stuff, the things that really helped us make progress, we may well overlook those things, we may well forget them. So we really need to make sure that we are across everything, that we are reflecting on the previous year, we're looking at everything that worked out, everything that didn't, and we are using that as data to inform our plan for the next year. I'm Dr Elizabeth Yardley and I've spent 20 years working as an academic in UK universities so I have seen the beginning of the academic year multiple times and I've come to realise what works really well when it comes to planning your year and what doesn't work quite so well. Before we crack on with this video, if you want to spend a bit of time planning your year thoroughly with some lovely planners and a how-to guide to walk you through the process step by step, you might want to check out my Power Planner. It's really great even if I do say so myself. And the details about the Power Planner are in the description, along with a cheeky discount code if you want to treat yourself to one. Anyway, let's get back to the video, which is all about how to reflect properly and thoroughly on the year that's just gone. And I know there's a bit of a tendency to feel a bit yuck, a bit ill about that word reflect. Nobody really wants to reflect properly and thoroughly because that involves looking at the cringeworthy stuff, the stuff that didn't work out, the stuff that went wrong, the stuff that we stuffed up. And we really just want to bury that stuff. We don't want to have to kind of get it out and look at it again. But it is such a valuable thing to do. So I'm going to walk you through this one step at a time. And the rubbish stuff, the stuff that didn't go right, that is only part of the story. You did have successes in the last year, you absolutely did. And they can be such a valuable thing to examine as well. By asking yourself the right questions, you can learn what actually caused those successes. Because success leaves clues. And if you can pick up on those clues, then you can recreate those conditions next year. Here's what you need to ask yourself to make sure that you do a proper and thorough reflection on last year. So go grab a pen and paper. First up, list out all of the amazing things that you achieved last year, big or small. Maybe you started your literature review. Maybe you finished your literature review. Perhaps you got ethical approval. Maybe you attended your first academic conference. Maybe you got through your annual review without falling to pieces. Maybe you connected with other PhD students and made a new friend. Maybe you found a really effective way of managing your time. Celebrate your wins. Often we don't take the time to do that, especially in PhD land. We think the win is getting the PhD and we forget to celebrate the little wins that we have along the way. But they matter because every step, whether that is a shuffle or whether it's a leap, is movement forwards. And that's progress. We need to celebrate progress. And this isn't just about the academic work side of things. It's also about the personal self-development stuff too. Have you got better at dealing with stress or anxiety? Are you better at having difficult conversations, dealing with conflict? What has changed about you as a person in the last year? Think back to where you were a year ago, how you felt a year ago, the kind of person that you were a year ago, and notice anything that's changed in that time. The next thing you need to do is note down how you managed to achieve those successes and how achieving those successes made you feel. Because the things that helped you achieve your successes over the past year are probably things that you want to repeat going into the next year. What were you doing around those successes? What was going on? Who were you with? Who was supporting you? What were you doing differently? Were you trying something new? A new process like time blocking or something like listening to white noise to help you concentrate? What we're doing here is identifying patterns. As I said earlier, success leaves clues. Let's get really clear about what works for you and let's double down on that next year. Thirdly, what didn't go so well? What goals did you have that you didn't achieve? What things were kind of a disaster and why were they a disaster? 
Did you not write as many words as you wanted to? Did you miss any deadlines? And why was that the case? Did you give a presentation at a conference and it didn't go down particularly well? Why was that? Now, in the same way that we thought about our successes in terms of those things that went well and we figured out what was going on around the things that went well, we were looking for clues, we're going to do exactly the same thing in terms of the things that didn't go so well, the things that went wrong, the things we failed at, the things that we didn't achieve. So think back to those things that didn't work out. Think about what was going on at the time. Think about what was happening in your life, both personally and in the academic sense, in terms of things that were going on at university, things that were happening with your peer group or your supervisor. Get really clear on those things that blocked you, on those things that prevented you from reaching your goals. And it can be quite tempting to think about external factors when we're looking back at these patterns around the things that didn't work out. We have a tendency to blame institutions, to blame other people, to to generally blame the universe. But often the clues actually lie within us. So are there any ways in which you got in your own way? Do you procrastinate? Why do you procrastinate? Is it because of a lack of motivation to do things? Or is it because you've got some deep seated fear of what will happen if you actually do them successfully? Yes, we're getting quite deep and psychological here, but that is actually a thing. Fear of success is one of the reasons why people procrastinate. And I have made a video about this and I will link to that up here. Perhaps you say yes to too much stuff. Do you take on too much and end up feeling overwhelmed and massively resentful about the things that you actually volunteer to do? So by identifying these patterns around our wins as well as our disappointments, we can start to identify the really important things that we need to keep in mind going into next year. And by starting to identify these things, we are equipping ourselves to go into next year doing something different from what we did in the previous year. Because if we just continue behaving in the same way, if we just assume that all of the barriers are going to disappear and that all of our good habits are going to continue, then we're going to come unstuck. Okay, so we need to get really familiar with the things that are happening around our successes and learn to repeat those and identify ways in which we can build that into our routine in the following year. And we also need to identify those barriers and those blocks and think ahead, kind of get ahead of our future selves a little bit. So, for example, if you have a tendency to procrastinate, what things can you do now to prevent that procrastination getting in your way next year? Could you be better organised? Could you perhaps arrange to work somewhere that's quieter? Could you set an out of office, out of office, out of office reply on your email when you've got a particular day when you want to work on a specific task? So we've got to get ahead of ourselves. We've got to not assume that we're just automatically going to repeat the good things. And we also need to assume that those barriers are still going to be there. And we need to actively do things to make sure that we are accounting for them and that we are preventing them from getting in our way next year. How can you repeat the things that have facilitated your success this year? And what action can you take to prevent the things that blocked you and the things that were a barrier to you from being a problem next year? Doing a PhD is, of course, about the academic work. It's about collecting data, it's about crunching numbers, it's about doing analysis. But equally as important is doing the work in terms of the mindset stuff. It's about being self-aware, knowing what your strengths and needs are, recognising when you're starting to get into a bit of a negative spiral and the things that you can do to pull yourself out of that. So really take the time to reflect thoroughly on the previous year and identify the lessons from that previous year to take into next year. Okay, that is it from me. And as I said at the beginning, if you want to get into a bit more detail in terms of your yearly planning process, check out my Power Planner. Link is in the description. And I'll be back very soon with another video on the ups and the downs and the messy and the magical of PhD life. I'll see you then.